I first met John way back in the late 1970s when he was spiritual director of the seminary and invited me, a recently ordained priest of Melbourne, to come to Brisbane to preach the Holy Week retreat to the seminarians. I was surprised when I met him finally. I'd expected something more in the imagined mode of spiritual directors, ascetical, solemn, otherworldly. What I found could hardly have been more different. An Aussie original and a Queensland classic. I'd never struck anything quite like it. And through the years since then, my sense of surprise at John Bathersby has never left me. After our first encounter at the seminary, we were together again in Rome in the early 1980s, he doing a doctorate in spirituality and I the masters in biblical studies. He was delightful, often hilarious company, regaling us with stories of extraordinary characters of the Toowoomba Diocese and eye-popping events from his years in Gundawindi. As I look back now to those years and those meals, I can see more than ever that I, at least, owe John Bathersby a deep, deep debt of personal gratitude in ways that are not easily expressed. The younger John had no Episcopal aspirations or ambitions, and as bishop, his was never the grand style. It took him quite a while to learn how to manage a crozier. He needed the then Father Ken Howell to tell him what to wear and when. And though he lived in the big house at Weinberg, his own quarters could hardly have been humbler. I took one look at them when I came and immediately decided to move upstairs to something more spacious. Just as Pope Francis is recasting the papal style, making it less monarchical, less grand in scale, John Bathersby recast the Episcopal style, making it more down to earth, less princely. He was more pastor than pontiff. He had his crises, perhaps even his failures, but through it all in the words of the letter to the Hebrews, which John loved and often quoted, he did not lose sight of Jesus. Before all else, John Bathersby was a lover of Jesus. And he spoke of this more and more as he grew older. In the gospel we have heard today, the Greek-speaking Jews say to Philip and Andrew, we want to see Jesus. And that was what drove John Bathersby. He wanted to see Jesus. And that became an ever-deepening passion in his life. And it was no accident that he took as his Episcopal motto, Lex Crucis, the law of the cross. Nor was it by chance that he died clutching a cross. In the end, his world became small and simple. But in a way, it always was. John didn't speak the language of philosophy so much. He didn't specialise in arguments of intellectual sophistication. His was the simpler and more mysterious language of discipleship. For 20 years, he never ceased to point his flock in that direction, urging them not to lose sight of Jesus in the midst of all the troubles and turmoil all the complexities and confusion. In that sense, John Bathersby was a simple man, but it was the hard-won simplicity of a man who had come to know what really mattered.
on the long climb of life. That simplicity, that clarity of vision is his greatest legacy to the Archdiocese of Brisbane. Eternal rest give to John, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace.